Hello! Welcome back to the Tour of Pleasure here at the Enchanted Kingdom of Hermione. Taking a month or so off, deal with some stuff, health issues. Figured I'd come back and talk about some good music. Since it's funny, all the stuff, all the bad music I talk about, that gets all the hits. But I'm tired of talking about bad music. I'm going to talk, going to talk about good music. And music that maybe you haven't heard of. And a recent box set, of course. I am that sucker. I was alerted to a new box set of one of my favorite African-American, let's call him a jazz artist, although he's more than just that, um, Julius Hemphill. Now, if you've heard of Julius Hemphill, you've probably heard about him in the context of the World Saxophone Quartet, which he was a founding member of and did a lot of writing for them. And um, they, they were an important jazz group um, in the 90s and whatnot. And, but he's done, that's really just one part of his storied career. He's been dead now for quite a while um, I forget when he died now. I should have checked this before I started. 2007? 1995. Um, and um, here's the box set that's just come out on New World Records. This is interesting because New World Records is a, largely a classical label, but they, they're, they specialize in American music. The Boye Multinational... Crusade for Harmony, and um, this is a this for somebody who wants, who likes Julius Enfield. This was a must buy. It wasn't cheap. It's was about, I think it was about 140 bucks. Before we get to that, though, I should start with this is the album that you want to hear. Uh, this box set is not the place to start. Dogon AD. 1972, self-released on his own Mabari label. Um, Julius Enfil by Kida E.J. Carroll on trumpet, Abdul Wadud on cello, Philip Wilson on drums, and of course Julius Enfil on either alto sax or flute. Now this is one of my maybe five favorite records of all time. It's, it's so complete. It's free jazz but with structure. The compositions are deep and because of the odd instrumentation, there's no bass, there's a cello, and the cellist, Abdul Wadud, Wadud um, is largely bowed but also strummed. And Do the Dogon are a, are a people from the Sub-Sahara in Mali. And this music really evokes Africa and really, um, I think it's the perfect expression of African-American art with regard to like finding their roots. And this record, I can't recommend this highly enough. This particular issue is a reissue on, I can't remember the label. And it's in microscopic print. Uh, God, I still can't read it. I can't read it. Where's my Where's my magnifying glass? You know it's getting bad when International Phonograph Incorporated. Um, I do believe Marty Elric had something to do with this, or maybe it was Tim Byrne. At any rate, this is a great reissue. I don't know if it's still available. They give you the original liner notes. They give you the original cover uh, from Mabari. Like I say, this was his label. And uh, there you go. Don't go on AD. And uh, yeah. Now, he, this was originally put out on his own label. Very limited distribution, obviously. I can't imagine what an original copy would sell for now stuff like this is really valuable but it was mercifully put out as you'll notice on 
Arista Freedom, when Arista Records first came along, they rather wisely um, started, um, well, they started to license stuff from the Freedom label in Europe. And uh, they, in their initial offering, when Arista first started, they put out a shitload of amazing good records. This is possibly the best one. And the bonus of this is that they put out this one, and they also put out a record called Coon Business, which featured the, tr the extra track on this, which is The Hard Blues. And The Hard Blues also features Hamiet Blue at baritone saxist, who joined Hemphill in the World Saxophone Quartet. And so that's a, because it's all part of the same session, um, it's really great to have this all together on one CD. I cannot recommend this record highly enough. It is fantastic. And over the years, he went from strength to strength. Um, Black Saint or Soul Note? Black Saint put out uh, Raw Materials and Residuals. This features Abdul Wadud and Don Moy from the Art Ensemble of Chicago. It's really good. Um, it has the, and there's the flat out jump suite on um, Black Saint as well, Oludara on trumpet, Warren Smith on percussion, Abdul Wadud again on this. Now both of these are quite good records. They do suffer from the Black Saint propensity for unbelievably dry sound. It's almost uncomfortably dry. Um, but, you know, that's just a minor quibble. Um, the Julius Hemphill Trio with Abdul Wadud and Joe Bonadio this came out on Music and Arts. This is really good. It has Dogon AD on it. It has Border Town on it. And finally, after doing quite a few records with the World Saxophone Quartet, and they were signed to None Such Electra, he got a chance to do his own big band record. Probably the only record he did for anything approaching a major label. The sound on this is excellent. There's a million really good players on it. I can't remember who's all on this, but it's it's just, it's wonderful. Um, Frank Lacey, Marty Eldridge, Julius Enfold, John Stubblefield, Ronnie Burge on drums. Um, you know, Frank Lacey, Jack Wilkins on guitar. Vincent Chaney, or sorry, Vincent Chancy, who I do believe played with Sun Ra. John Clark on French horn. Bill, Fris Bill Frizzell, these are the soloists, I guess. The lineup is Hemphill, Elrich, J.D. Perrin on baritone, John Purcell on tenor, John Stubblefield on tenor, David Hines on trumpet, Rasul Siddiq on trumpet, Frank Lacey on trombone, David Taylor on bass trombone, Vincent Chancy and John Clark, the two preeminent French horn players in jazz, Jack Wils Wilkins and Bill Frizzell on guitar, Jerome Harris on electric bass, Ronnie Burge on drums, Gordon Gottlieb on percussion. This is a really good record. And uh, it sort of bogs down a little bit on the almost 19 minute multimedia piece, um, Drunk on God. But it's, he tends to do, he tends to really go for the, you know, big statement. And then the last one I got here is the Julius Hemphill Sextet which was a saxophone sextet. Um, and this might have been the last record he played on. He did another sextet record after this, but he didn't play on it because he was too ill. Died of diabetes, I believe. This is 1991. Hemphill Elrich, Carl Grubbs on soprano and alto, James Carter on tenor, Andrew White on tenor, and Sam Furness, what a great name, on baritone. This is actually really good sound. It's also on Black Saint. But by then they'd solved the problem of adding just a tiny bit of reverb to it to make it palatable. So that's all I have by this guy. He didn't put out a lot of stuff. There's other stuff out there. Of, it's all pretty good. But when this was released, I was really happy. Because this is a really interesting group of CDs. They've made it seven CD set. And it's each CD sort of has a theme. Uh, number one is the Boyne Multinational Crusade for Harmony One, um, with 
the Julius Hemphill Quartet, Hemphill, Oludara, Abdul Wadud, Warren Smith. And then there's um, a song with Hemphill by Keita Carroll, Jerry Riley, a guitarist I've never heard of, and he's really good, Philip Wilson on drums, and then Dimples, the Fat Lady on Parade with Julius Hemphill, John Carter on clarinet, by Keita Carroll on trumpet, Roberto Miranda is a name I've not heard, on bass, and Alex Klein. Now, for all of you Wilco fans out there, Nels Klein played in um, uh, Julius's band for a hot minute. Um, and that is, this is sort of a collection. Now, these are archival recordings. These are from his own personal archives. And so, the first caveat is, none of these really are in fantastic sound. These are, um, a lot of them are from the collection of Baikita Carroll. Um, the second CD is duet, Julius and Phil Abdul Wadud. Now, we don't really know where this was recorded. This is probably the best sound on this. And you would think this is not as interesting as it is. You'd be wrong. Um, five of the six pieces are over 10 minutes long. These guys stretch out and they free improvise. And there's just nobody like these. These guys really played well together. And um, I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can. Um, the Janus Company. Alex Klein on drums, by Keita Carroll on trumpet, Julius Hemphill, again on alto and soprano, and they're joined by Abdul Wadud for a couple of pieces, including a version of Dogon A.D. Again, it, it would be nice there's <laughs> Alex Klein. But who is the guy that sticks out in this picture? Um, this is really good. Another, you know, band that he had. And then we have his chamber music. Now, I, I was going to say that he had pretensions of being a classical composer, but he was a classical composer. His partner at the end of his life was Ursula Oppens, the pianist who, amongst other things, was the first performer of Frederick Shevsky's The People United Will Never Be Defeated. Um, we have a piece performed by her called Parchment. We have Mingus Gold, four pieces, three pieces. Um, for the Dedalus String Quartet, and then an unknown title, they don't even know what they're called, John Purcell on oboe, tenor sax, bass, clarinet, Marty Elrich, Janet Grease on bassoon, Bruce Purse on trumpet, Ray Anderson on trump trombone, and tuba. Like, these, these are serious, good, big names. Um, I, don't, I don't want to say they're legends, per, per per se, but extremely um, well-known names in, in the free jazz world in African-American music. This CD, number five, Roy Boy Solo and Text. Now, he did a bunch of records where, which were basically him, him speaking and playing solo soprano saxophone. Um, I find these just a little bit harder to take because they're a little bit one-dimensional, perhaps. However, there's a great piece at the end called Bells, and, uh, or, well, so it's, yeah. Um, most of these are, in fact, composed by him. Unfiltered Dreams, um, poetry by K. Curtis Lyle. K. Curtis Lyle does the poem on the Big Band album as well. Um, that one, I haven't spent a lot of time on. Then there is, this is sort of a grab bag. A um, couple of pieces by Hemphill, Wadud, and Michael Carvin on drums. A couple of pieces by, actually there's about eight little pieces on here, and they're really short. Some of them are like 46 seconds long. Of Julius Hemphill and Jerome Harris on electric bass. And these are, I, I suspect they're demos of his compositions. There's almost no improvisation in them. And it's, it's interesting. Um, then there is the Pigskin and for Billy Holiday with the quartet, Julius Hemphill, Jack Wilkins on guitar, uh, Jerome Harris on bass, Michael Carvin on drums. And then finally, there's one piece by what he called the J.A.H. band, the Jaw band. Uh, they did an album 
uh, oh, what was it called? And it's a really, it's a pretty good album. It's the closest he ever did to having like a fusion group. And this band was Julius Hemphill, Nels Klein, Alan Jaffe on guitar, Stuart Liebig on electric bass, and Alex Klein on drums. So two guitar players. Uh, Nels Klein really played well in this band. Probably my favorite work he did. Finally, the real piece de resistance, for me anyways, was a concert they did in, he did in at Joyous Lake, which I believe is in upstate New York. This was another recording from Baketa Carroll's collection. He just put a tape deck on the stage and recorded it. And this is Julius Hemphill on alto, Baketa Carroll on trumpet, and Dave Holland on bass, and Jack Dejanet on drums. This is really good. The sound quality, I wish it was better, but it's not bad. Um, and I, I don't think any of these compositions have appeared anywhere before. Mirrors, Dung, and a Wood Boogie, W-O-U-L-D. Wood Boogie is really interesting because it's kind of a boogie, but not really. And uh, I, think the, I think this show happened as a result of Holland and Dejanet living in upstate New York near Woodstock. And I think maybe Hemphill lived up there too. At any rate, I, I can't imagine what being there must have been like. It was, uh, you know, just one of these things. Mercifully, um, Ikea Carroll recorded it. And it's, it's not bad. Um, and like Eugene Chadbourne likes to say, the worst recording in the world is better than no recording at all. None of these are abysmally bad recordings. I don't want to, I want to emphasize that this was worth buying for me for its musical value. Like it says, File Under Jazz slash Hemphill Julius, which is very New World, um, New World Records. Um, if you know who Julius Hemphill is, and you really like his music, if you like Dogon AD, this is a worthwhile purchase. It's not cheap. It's really for the dedicated fan. I am that dedicated fan. I am that sucker. And I saved up my loonies and toonies to buy this. And I'm really glad I did. And so that's pretty much all I can tell you about this guy. Um, a very, very underrated, unknown figure in African-American music of the late 20th century. If you like free jazz or, you know, improvised African-American music, you m must check him out. He's really, really good. And, um, yeah, it's, I can't recommend it highly enough. So there you have it. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm going to continue doing records that I like as opposed to the records I don't like because when I do records I don't like I get millions of hits and I get people calling me a moron because I don't like the Grand Funk's first live album which shocking and uh, I did one on Chicago that got zillions of hits every man jack of them an angry angry response about how dare I say that you know a four record live album that has no new songs on it is a waste of dead dinosaurs but hey you know it's my opinion if you don't like my opinion maybe you shouldn't be watching these anyways thanks for watching and um we'll 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 i'm sort of back in the swing of things we'll get some more happening pretty soon so uh we'll we'll talk to you later